What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at it again with another video. So, we just finished watching King and Queen of the Ring. Shout out to everyone that was in the live stream on the In the Clutch page. I know the homie Dub uh, would have pulled up if he could have, but he was uh, at a uh, track meet with the kids, and I'm pretty sure they out there running it up getting some more gold medals you know they've been killing it on the track meets uh recently so shout out to dub and his children the family out there uh doing it big you know so that's why he wasn't there for the live stream but i know he would have been there if he could have and i was running a little bit late because uh, uh my brother i was at my brother's high school graduation shout out to my little brother uh james congratulations to you man that is awesome uh, i'm glad i was able to see that and be a part of that moment for you so yeah that was that's why i was running a little bit behind but i was still able to catch the first match um as i was heading back home i had it uh hooked up on my phone and uh we're gonna get into how things played out and we're gonna start with the first one because some stuff happened in this very first match that we gotta talk about so the first match up was live versus becky lynch for the women's world championship and the crowd was into it i was very concerned on how the crowd was going to be especially for the women's matches tonight but the, for this particular match the crowd was into it they were singing becky lynch's theme song when she came out there uh live got a good reaction when they she was out there and i was watching the match but like i said i had it pulled up on my phone so i was driving i was also trying to concentrate on that i had it hooked up to my uh window mount um so i was trying to focus on the road but also listen and you know catch some stuff of what was happening in the match the stuff i was able to catch i definitely was enjoying once again the crowd atmosphere was great for this match they were really into it you could tell they were rooting for becky and Liv was the overwhelming heel in this situation and it was it was really nice to see that dynamic in the crowd actually being interested um lived actually looked good out there in a sense of she didn't look like the i guess you could say the damsel in distress or uh the underdog here in a sense she looked like she belonged with becky she actually um was really bringing it to becky you know, countering a lot of her moves and she didn't look out of place which is really good to see especially with this she i mean you can at this point you definitely can say she's more or less a heel but her attitude and her aggressiveness and and i, I definitely like that i like the fact that she was bringing the heat to becky becky has been someone that she hasn't been able to beat in her uh wwe career i believe so i think that's what they mentioned so this was nice dynamic she didn't come off as the underdog and had to fight from underneath she was actually giving the fight to becky but we got to talk about obviously what the most noticeable thing that happened here so we're getting towards the end of the match and you see dominic come out um not, like come to ringside and nuclear heat they're booing the hell out of dominic i mean booing him and becky's like what's going on here why are you out here like get out of here and that's when um the ref is you know checking on live and that's when dominic decides to get a steel chair and then he throws it in the ring he throws it in the ring towards becky in a sense like it looked like he's giving it to becky to potentially use on 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 live so Dominic ends up going to the other side where the referee's at on the ring apron and trying to distract the referee. So that's when you see Liv Morgan take advantage of the distraction by Dominic and she ends up hitting like some modified like DDT uh, on Becky Lynch onto the steel, uh, steel chair that's laid behind the referee. She throws the chair out and then she ends up um, hitting Becky Lynch with her finisher for the one the two and the three and that's it that's how she loses and Lil Morgan is your new women's world champion crowd is booing people Michael Cole and, and and Corey Graves are like Dom you're a fucking idiot what have you done you gave the person that injured Rhea Ripley the championship what have you done and Dominic looks like like confused and like like damn I fucked up and it was and i like what they're doing here because i do believe 
it's it's not what it seems because they've had conversations. I even think I heard Michael Cole said they <clears throat> live in Dominic with were having some type of conversation before the show even started. So I don't think it's truly just Dominic made a mistake. I do think he's kind of in on it. And you can see Liv, like I told y'all, I was going to get, it was the Liv Morgan revenge tour. I got my revenge. She won the championship. She injured Rhea Ripley. And it looks like she may be taking Dominic away. And she got the championship from, uh, she caused Rhea Ripley to drop the championship. And she ended up getting that same championship from Becky, a person that she hasn't beaten. So everything's kind of working out for her right now. And once again, I like the story here of I do think at some point Dominic's going to actually kind of play into it. Because right now he's giving off the I messed up, but I do think he may have been in on it. And I think we're going to get that moment when Rhea comes back. It's most likely probably SummerSlam. Hopefully we'll see Rhea versus Liv Morgan. That's going to be a must-see match because Rhea's going to want her revenge. And that's when... We'll see a situation where Rhea's out there with Dominic and then Dominic turns on Rhea. And I can see Rhea losing to live because of that. Dominic is the catalyst. I was not expecting her to win at this particular pay-per-view or this PLE. I thought maybe at the next one with the help of Dominic. But once I saw Dominic come out there, I was like, oh, she's winning. She's winning. And she won. So it's going to be very interesting to see how that plays out. I'm very excited to see what they do with Liv Morgan. Hey, I, I'm not going to lie to you. Who would have thought Liv Morgan being the world champion? And I'm actually okay with it in 2024. That was not in my bingo card, man. This 2024, it's a surprising year. But overall, solid match. Crowd enjoyed it. Love the story that they're telling with it. Can't wait to see what happens next um, they got something good on their hands. Hopefully, they don't drop the ball with Liv going forward. Um, next, we got the triple threat match between Sammy, uh, Bronson Reed, and Chad Gable. And I didn't get the chance to check out the first half of this match. And I'm probably going to go check it out. But the second half of this match was so damn good. It's easy. It's my favorite. It's my favorite match of the night, honestly. Still is. And I only seen like a second half of it because at that point I had just got home. So I was trying to set up the stream. But I'm definitely going to go back and watch the first half. But the second half of this match was fantastic. This crowd was electric for Sammy. I mean truly on fire for Sammy. Like Sammy, <laughs> bruh. Like I, I don't think y'all understand how hype this crowd was i know a lot of people said this crowd was going to be trash boom, boom 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 they were not when sammy was out there anything that sammy did in this match they loved every second of it and i would definitely go advise you guys watch this match this was great um i do want to talk about what was going to happen with otis because otis was out there on the behalf of chad gable so otis is out there and there's a situation where First and foremost, can we just say Chad Gable suplexing Bronson Reed, who was holding Sami Zayn as well? Just impressive strength. Got to put that out there. Um, so they're outside the ring, right? And Chad Gable is holding up. Uh, well, he he's berating Otis because Sami's out there. He's kind of dazed. So he wants Otis to attack Sami. Like he's like, he's pretty much in his face. What are you going to do about it? You're going to take him over me. He slaps him in the face. Crowd is, you know, kind of chanting for Otis to snap out of it. And then Chad Gable ends up picking up Sammy, holding him up for Otis to charge at him. Otis charges at him, but Sammy Ducks moves out the way. And Otis ends up hitting uh, Chad with a mean as um, clothesline. Just a mean ass clothesline. Just knocked him flat. And then after that, you have Bronson Reed, Reed dazed in the corner. Sammy runs and hits the Huluva kick on Bronson Reed for the one, two, three victory. And the crowd went crazy. So what I'm very interested in seeing is what happens with Chad Gable and Otis. Obviously, 
they're going with the storyline of Otis is going to finally get pushed to that point where he snaps back at Chad Gable and stands up for himself. I think that's going to be a very good moment. But they also tease something with uh, Chad Gable meeting the Creed brothers. And I think that may be something that play uh, that may come into play in the future with maybe Chad Gable dropping um alpha academy or recruiting them or maybe making a new stable with the creed brothers because right now they're not doing nothing with them and i think that would be something good because they have similar type of wrestling style and it would fit chad gable being with them a little bit better because of their wrestling ability so they could be making new making a new stable or making a uh Alpha Academy 2.0, but I do think that's going to happen. They're going to align themselves with Chad Gable at some point. So very interested to see how that's going to play out. But the right person won here and Chad Gable, Gable did not get pinned. So that was a good decision. Overall, really great match. I'm going to go back and watch the first half of it, um, first beginning of it, because that crowd was just electric when I, I was actually able to sit down and watch it. Loved everything I saw there. Next, we're going to get into uh, Lyra versus um, Nia Jax for the women's finals in the Queen of the Ring tournament. And I kind of figured, and I think a lot of us figured, what was going to happen here. This was my least favorite match of the show, but it still was a good match. I'm not going to sit up here and say it wasn't. This was a good match, even though it was my least favorite. Um, there was I like what they did with Lyra here. And I may be pronouncing it wrong. I believe I'm saying it right. Lyra. <laughs> I hope I am. Y'all going to correct me. But I like what they did with her here. She's relatively new on the roster. She's already in the finals of the Queen of the Ring tournament. And she had a good showing against Nia. Nia didn't completely squash her. She Nia actually had to put in some work to put her away. And Lyra was using her size and speed to really try to bring it to Nia. And I can appreciate what they're doing with her and i see some great things for her in the future but ultimately naya ended up winning uh the finish came abruptly like i want to say the finish just happened out of nowhere but it was brutal because you know the spot where naya goes up top and she pretty much jumps down and crushes her opponent basically lara was trying to do like some type of uh maybe like sunset flip to like power bomb her but it didn't work and then uh, Naya just ended up sitting on her, just crushing her. It was a it was a quick, effective, brutal finish, but it worked. And um, Naya Jax ended up winning uh, with that maneuver. And she is your new queen of the ring. And Triple H came out there, handed her the crown. And you, you could tell Triple H was telling something to her in her ear. And she was tearing up. Uh, obviously, she wasn't trying to. But she was tearing up. She was, you know, it, it was getting emotional for her. Obviously, they mentioned on on commentary what she's been through getting back to WWE and WWE using her in a prominent way, which they have been. I think this is Nia Jax's best run so far, in my opinion. And they've been using her pretty well. So it was good to see that moment for her. She started to heal it back up once um, she was announcing that she is your new queen of the ring. Uh, and Bailey is next up. At SummerSlam, she gets a title opportunity against Bailey at SummerSlam. Not gonna lie to you, I love Bailey, but it looks like Bailey may end up dropping that championship at this year's SummerSlam. So we'll see how things play out with that. But I think the right person won here. Uh, Lyra, they're gonna have big things for her in the future. Uh, the right person won in this particular situation, and they gave it to Nia. So we'll see how things play out with that one. So next, we cut to the back. Um, Byron Saxon is trying to ask Becky Lynch how did she feel about what happened with her, her match with Liv Morgan and you can see behind ba Byron that Becky is kind of telling off Dominic like she's going off on Dominic we're not sure what's being said but he's she's going off on Dominic and Byron asked her you know how does she feel about everything that went down and she was like you know, she obviously she's upset and, and, and irritated and pissed off. But she said she's going to talk to Adam Pierce um, since she has a quote unquote rematch clause in her contract. And she wants to have a rematch 
with Liv Morgan on Monday Night Raw, this upcoming Monday Night Raw, which I thought we did away with uh, <laughs> rematch clauses, but I guess we didn't. We really didn't. I know they said it on air, but we really didn't do away with that. People were still getting rematches. Um, they just weren't calling it rematch clauses. So it's very, in very interesting verbiage, but it seems we may end up getting that on Monday Night Raw. We'll see if that does play out, but most likely Liv... Whenever they do have their match again, Liv and Becky, Liv is going to retain, obviously, from nefarious deeds, maybe Dominate gets even more involved. We'll see how that plays out. But Becky, uh, obviously pissed, wants to uh, use her rematch clause to get a rematch with Liv Morgan for the title on this upcoming episode of Monday Night Raw. So we'll see if that really does happen. Next, the match that I was really looking forward to, Gunther versus Randy Orton in the King of the Ring Finals. This was a really, really good match. First time ever, big fight field. The crowd was electric. Gunther comes out there looking like he belongs there, as he should. Um, um, Michael Cole put out an interesting stat. Gunther has had two title reigns that have equaled up to over 1,500 days in WWE. The NXT UK Championship, which is, I believe he held over 800 days, and obviously the Intercontinental Championship, which he's held, he held for 666 days. That is what you call protection of a character, of a wrestler. The dude has won two championships in WWE and have held them both for upwards to 1,500 days in combined ridiculous so whenever he does win the world heavyweight championship <laughs> just know he's gonna hold that championship for at least a year um so the match starts up oh and before we can get into it shout out to the saudi crowd and jetta y'all were amazing with randy orton's theme entrance again y'all did it on smackdown y'all did it again here even though randy orton took his sweet old time out there walking to the ramp and stuff um but y'all were singing the entire time it was such a beautiful thing to see uh, um lyon french started it and all these other ple's in these other countries and even in the states when you hear Randy Orton's theme music, you need to sing it because it just makes it that much even better. So it was dope to see that. I just wanted to mention that before we got into it. Um, when they locked up, when they first locked up, the crowd was chanting, this is awesome. <laughs> before they even did anything, they locked up. Crowd was chanting, this is awesome. Gunther and Randy were going back and forth at one point in the match with vicious uppercuts they were you know really getting at each other very stiff filling each other out love the idea of randy not taking no bs from gunther and gunther not backing down because he's randy orton i love this at one point early in the match gunther dodged an rko like randy went for it very early in the match and he dodged it like he kind of got out of it and that's when randy started selling his back we all know randy's had some back issues that's why he was gone from wwe for quite some time so he was selling the back and that became a thing that gunther was trying to target and that's what i love what they've been doing with gunther if he sees an injury he's not just going to target it he's going to do everything he can to break you with that said injury that's how he's been winning a lot of these matches, especially in the tournament. So I love that they're doing that with Gunther. Very meticulous, very direct. He sees an injury. He's going to try to put you out of commission. So later on in the match, Randy finally is able to hit the RKO on Gunther. But he couldn't cover immediately because of his back. He was selling the back. So as he's getting close to cover him, Gunther wisely rolls out the ring. So the, the RKO is still protected, but Randy's selling that injury. Then, close to like near end of the match, like closing segments of the match, Randy hits another RKO on Gunther. But this time, Randy wasn't able to fully plant his knee because Gunther started attacking the bandaged up knee during the match. So not only is Randy's back hurting, but his knee is hurting and... He wasn't able to fully put all his weight on the pin. He was really pinning him with one leg. Gunther knew that and was able to take his momentum and then 
roll Randy up in like a um in a roll up in a sense for the one, the two, and the three victory. But here's the thing about this roll up, and the finish kind of felt weird because on the camera angle that they showed, you can clearly see Randy Orton's shoulders up. And then there's another camera angle they showed, and even Corey Graves on commentary said, hold on, wait a minute. He didn't go into great detail, but he just, you saw it. I don't know if that was a botch. I don't know if that's part of the storyline that they plan on telling, but one of Randy's shoulders was clearly up on the roll-up pin attempt. So I don't know what's going to happen there, but as it stands, Gunther is your King of the Ring champion. He's your King of the Ring champion. Triple H came out there, gave him the crown. And, you know, the crowd started chanting, you deserve it. And he was like, I appreciate y'all telling me that, but I don't need y'all to tell me what I do and don't deserve. Healing it up as he should. And um, he's basically saying at SummerSlam, um, I'm going to be your new uh, world champion. Yes, I know my phone's been ringing throughout this entire video, but I've been trying to get my AC fixed because my AC went out. And uh, having an AC go out in this type of heat in Houston is like 95 degrees today. It's awful <laughs> in the crib right now. The light's not making it any better. It is truly awful. So if you hear my phone ring, that's why, because we're trying to get the stuff situated. And I don't even think I'm going to be able to get it situated today. So, but hey, got to do what you got to do. Got to get a vi video out. But either way, th the ending of this match was definitely just, I didn't hate it, but I wasn't the biggest fan of it because I, I don't think this match needed some type of potential out to have a rematch if they do plan on having a rematch uh, i think you should just have gunther win it clean out right i would have been okay with that honestly and could just sell up the fact that he took advantage of randy orton's injuries like he had been taking advantage of a lot of other people's injuries in this tournament and i think that would have been fine but we'll see how that plays out don't know if it was a botch or a part of a uh storyline that they're trying to tell uh maybe getting a rematch with randy i don't know we will see but uh, either way, this match was good for a first time. It's just that ending for me kind of was a, it was a little bit of a, a head scratcher. But either way, still enjoyable match. And the last match of the night, obviously, Cody versus Logan for the WWE Undisputed Championship. Um, This was really good. I expected it to be good. This was a very fun match. Logan Paul is impressive as hell. He knows what he's doing out there. You can tell that he knows what he's doing out there. And um, whether you love him or hate him, the guy just impresses you every time. Um, Logan, during the match, Logan actually was very, it's like you could tell he scouted Cody. Because certain moves that Cody would do, he would counter. He was ready. He was ready for certain moves Cody was going to do. And I like that. I can appreciate a wrestler scouting their opponent. And he was actually giving Cody a little bit of a tough time. But there was a segment or a situation where they're outside the ring. And you see one of Logan's friends, like, kind of talking shit to Cody. And then he ends up shoving Cody, which technically the ref saw it. That should have been a disqualification. Cody should have won right there. Someone dis put their hands on him. And it, clearly they were with Logan because they had the prime shirt on. So, obviously, Cody brings him to the ringside area. He, you know, kind of walks him down on the opposite side of the ring. And one of his other friends gives him the brass knucks, as we knew was going to happen. Cody runs back at Logan, jumps off the steps to hit, get a rib shot with the brass knucks. Now, Michael Cole is not having it on commentary. He's talking his trash. He's calling Logan a loser or whatnot. And... Even Logan was like, hey, who are you talking to? Like, he was he was trying to get behind the announcer's desk to, like, confront Michael Cole. And Michael Cole was standing on business. I love it just to see that. We even got a Michael Cole chant because of that, which was awesome. Michael Cole was standing on business because Logan Paul was talking his trash. And Corey Graves had to come up there and try to stop him. Like, hey, man, just focus on your match. Hey, man, focus on your match. I love that. Love what Michael Cole was doing, man. That was He was killing it on commentary tonight, especially in this match. Um, at one point in the match, Logan hit the crossroads on Cody for a two count. 
very disrespectful and it it kind of brought back memories of when roman hit the crossroads on cody at wrestlemania he said that move don't beat anybody anyway <laughs> that move don't that move don't beat anybody anyway I, I i thought that was a nice little nice little nod to that um but cody obviously kicked out of his own move um then cody decided not cody logan decided to bring cody out to the ringside area logan's talking trash to michael cole again on their announce table cleared everything out and this is when um logan tried to hit the pedigree he was like this is the triple h paul levette i mean it's the paul levette uh logan paul era whatever he tried to hit the pedigree pedigree on cody onto the table but obviously cody was able to slip out cody goes to like the barricade area and then the table is right next to it and hits the cody cutter onto the table and it was a nice Nice uh, visual, even though the table didn't break. It's still a nice visual. Cody hitting a Cody cutter onto the table um, to Logan Paul. Um, next, after that, as Cody gets back in the ring, Logan doesn't look like he's about to make the 10 count. The ref's counting up to 10. And right when he's about to count to 10, Cody stops the 10, the 10 count. Now, of course, it's just one of those things. Oh, there goes Cody being Cody, being the good guy. Obviously, you, I, you, you would let the ref just count them out. But we know that's not the finish you want. But it's just character-wise, I would just let the ref count them out. But Cody's like, no, nah, I want to beat his ass in the ring. I, I get it, but I just would have left the ref count them out. But I get why that didn't really happen. But it's still like, Cody can't help himself to be that good old good guy. <laughs> but obviously, that, that kind of cost him. And even announcers said it. Him doing that cost him because that's when Logan started to get the upper hand. Um, Logan was able to put Cody onto the announce table. He went to one of his homies, got some prime, went to the top rope. You already knew what spot he was going to do. Hit the frog splash from the top rope to the announce table. Beautiful frog splash, beautiful height that Logan got. Destroyed Cody. Like, destroyed him. Then, dragged him back in the ring, went to the top rope, and hit another frog splash on Cody for Cody to kick out. I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yep. Once Cody kicked out of both of those, I was like, oh, yeah. We're, we're in super, super Cody territories at this point. Um, then there was, a, of course, a ref bump. Um, Cody moves out the way. I don't know why the ref was even in the corner of the turnbuckle. Um, Logan jumps, splashes right onto the ref. The ref dies after that <laughs> like he ends up dying and cody ends up hitting this maneuver where he essentially drops logan on the back of his neck i'm not sure if you guys know what it is let me know down below uh, what maneuver that is because this is a sick move it looks very dangerous if it's done wrong the person taking it could damn near end up dead or paralyzed sick move but you know the ref was down so the crowd shouting crowd chow, uh shouting chanting one, two, three, four, but ref's knocked out. So as he's trying to get the ref up, that's when Logan Paul hits him with the low blow. Hits him with the low blow. Ref doesn't see it. Pulls out the brass knucks again. And he's about to hit Cody with him. But Cody said, nah, 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 nah. That's not happening. Cody gets Logan in the in the cross face. Not the cross face. <laughs> in the crossroads. He uh verbally says. I'm Cody Rose, bitch. It hits him not with not just one, not just two, but three crossroads for the one, two, three pin victory. And that was it. That's how the show ended. I know there was a lot of people disappointed in the chat that we didn't get an Uncle Howdy situation. But I think a time and a place. Let's not rush it. It's going to happen when it's supposed to happen. But overall, I enjoyed this match, Logan. He, he just doesn't know what a miss is in relations to uh, him wrestling. Dude, just, he can't miss. Logan Paul truly cannot miss. I love seeing him work in that ring. Every time he's using a different move that he's learned, and he does it effectively. So, this was a really good match. Um, enjoyed what they did here. They really showed out, gave the fans exactly what they wanted. Overall, I think a lot of us knew that, Logan wasn't going to win, but they somewhat tried to make you believe just a bit that maybe he could do it. So 
overall, this was a fun show. Great show. I gave it, uh, I would say, eight and a half out of ten. I enjoyed this show. Quick matches were straight to the point. Uh, the only match that was my least favorite was the, the women's Queen of the Ring final. Um, but either way, it was still enjoyable. That was still a, a very good match and very interested to see how things play out going forward on both brands. So comment down below. Let me know your favorite match of the night, your least favorite match of the night, what you rate the show on a scale of 1 to 10, and where do you think the story is going to head going forward now that Gunther has won King of the Ring and Nia Jax has won Queen of the Ring. Uh, Queen of the Ring. Where do you think their stories is going to align? Also, what's going to happen with Liv Morgan now being the champion? And, and essentially, Liv Morgan finished her story. Got her revenge story finished up. So, it's going to be very interesting to see how that plays out. And once again, sorry for the phone interruptions and stuff like that. If you guys did hear it in the video. Once again, I'm just trying to get my AC fixed. I don't even know if I'm going to record tomorrow. Because these lights are hot. I'm, I may actually just chill tomorrow. Because... It's just too hot in the crib. These lights make everything hotter. I'm probably just going to chill. So, But uh, I'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see how I feel. But I appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on the channel. Road to 150K. And I'm still going to be the YouTube wrestling champion of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next one. Peace.